morning. morning. Welcome to our worship of service. You may be seated. Before we start, we recognize that we're all to gather together on the uh, traditional and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Uh, just a few announcements. Actually, there's a number of announcements. Uh, and there's in the pamphlet that you get or during the emails, but uh, we'll touch upon some of them today. Uh, just a reminder that uh, Kensington session will be meeting next Sunday after church. Also, uh, we're celebrating Holy Communion next Sunday here in worship. So uh, let people know about that. Uh, Clinton View Lodge service is happening this Thursday, May 26th at 2 o'clock. Uh, we we're allowed to have a choir. So if you'd like to lend your voices to the worship service, please uh, come on out. Masks are mandatory, however, uh, when we're going to Clinton View Lodge. Spring Bible study, we're having our last week of the uh, spring session uh, this Wednesday evening and Thursday night, or Thursday morning, I should say. Ladies Guild, uh, they're meeting for the last time uh, this spring. Not for the last time, but the last time for this spring session. Uh, Tuesday at 1.30 here at the church. Also, uh, still, if there's anyone graduating from high school that you know of that's uh, connected to our family, connected to our churches, uh, please let Betty know. Uh, we're having a Kensington Church Spring Cleanup Saturday, June 4th, so just uh, mark that on your calendar. Start at 9 and go to about probably 1 o'clock. Uh, so indoor cleaning, outdoor cleaning, whatever you'd like to do, whether it's windows or dust or whatever, yeah, you can help us out with that. Uh, as we've been saying, Harriet Cole's turning 90th and uh, for families looking to do something special for her. Uh, so if you want to send her a birthday card, she would love to get that. And a little note, I know she'd love that even more. Uh, I've talked about this, the upstream uh, worship team, a worship band is coming to the island. They're from Toronto. They're going to Wellspring Presbyterian Church. Uh, they're doing two concerts, or two performances, Saturday and Sunday, June 4th and 5th, 7 o'clock in the evening. And it's, uh, you don't need to get a ticket, you can just show up and it's a free will offering. Uh, the camp here is, uh, their camping season's coming up and they've uh, released their new wish list for this year. Uh, so if you'd like to help out with that ministry or consider helping it out, um, there's a list out at the door there you can uh, get, and there's a whole bunch of things. If there's not anything specific that uh, you feel like you want to buy, or but you want to donate money to the cause, you can also do that as well, and they'll put it towards uh, purchasing some of the things on the wish list. Vacation Bible School uh, for this area is happening the first week of July. Uh, if you know anybody ages 4 to 12 who'd like to attend, uh, you can register them online or there's some paper copies there that you can fill out and send in. Uh, just a reminder, if you want to get on the email list, uh, you can join that as well and get the weekly announcements and the uh, weekly service through your email. And I'd just like also to say uh, thank you to everyone for the uh, helping out with the beef dinner. I'd like to there's too many people to thank, but I'd like to thank Andrew in particular for uh, bringing it all together as he always does and cooking a wonderful meal. I've heard uh, good things from people already. I had a couple texts and emails saying pass on our thanks. It was a wonderful meal. So uh, just to let you know that. I'd like to thank uh, people like Trudy and Ruth and others who are doing a lot of the work behind the scenes. And I know Judy was helping out with that and I don't want to list everybody because I know there's tons. <laughs> But uh, thank you to all those who were selling tickets, those who came to the peeling party, those who were helping here yesterday. All that is much appreciated, and I know it went over well. So well that there's some leftovers for all of us. If you have a sweet tooth, there's still some sweets left. Uh, there's some gravy if you like to just eat gravy. Uh, and there's some uh, vegetables as well, uh, meat, uh, not meat, that the dinner without the meat. Uh, so you, if you'd like to pick up some of that after church, uh, you can do so. Ruth just needs a little bit of time to get some of the stuff out of the fridge. Um, but they will be just out here in the uh, choir room. And if you'd like to give a donation, that would be wonderful. And we'd also like to say thank you for the lift, because the lift proved very useful yesterday. Um, I couldn't imagine us hauling everything up the stairs as... Uh, so the lift went very well. So we thank God for bringing that into our congregation so that we could use it for not just getting people up and down, but uh, helping us put on this service as well. All right, with all of that, 
Today is uh, Healing and Reconciliation Sunday for the Presbyterian Church in Canada. We recognize um, that our, our part in uh, healing and reconciliation with our Indigenous peoples. As a national body, the Presbyterian Church in Canada has taken a number of initiatives to acknowledge our denomination's role and responsibility in the residential school system, beginning with the uh, adoption of the Confession by the 120th General Assembly on June 9, 1994. Also, the Presbyterian Church in Canada is a member of the All-Party Indian Residential Schools Settlement Agreement. And with this agreement, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was established. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada believes that in order for Canada to flourish going forward, reconciliation between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal Canada must be based on certain principles. And a couple of these principles are that reconciliation requires constructive action on addressing the ongoing legacies of colonialism that have, been, that have had destructive impacts on Aboriginal people's education, cultures and languages, health, child welfare, the administration of justice, and economic opportunities in prosperity. And reconciliation must create a more equitable and inclusive society by closing the gaps in social, health, and economic outcomes that exist between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal Canadians. So this morning we're looking at the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's call to action number three, which states, we call upon all levels of government to fully implement Jordan's principle. And Jordan's principle places a child first. Needs based on len or sorry, needs based lens on government and public agency decision making and services for indigenous children. So a little bit of background on this Jordan's principle. Jordan River Anderson was from Norway House Cree Nation in Manitoba. He was born with complex medical needs and spent more than two years unnecessarily in hospital while provincial and federal governments argued over which jurisdiction was responsible for Jordan's health care costs. And Jordan died when he was only five years old. Calls to actions one through five deal with protecting and prioritizing the needs and well-being of indigenous children. And while Jordan's principle reflects a health care setting, a child first principle has implications across child poverty, housing, water, sanitation, food security, family violence, addictions, and educational inequities. Prior prioritizing the needs and well-being of children must also consider the shockingly disproportionate number of Indigenous children that are removed from their homes, even communities, by child and family service agencies. Fulfilling these calls to action and upholding Jordan's principle is critical for the well-being of Indigenous children in Canada. Let us pray. Creator God, you cherished, you cherish all your children, and you call us to love and care for them also. But we confess that our ways are too often not your ways, that our societies are unequal and our policies too often wounding. As a church, we have participated in the harms of colonization and racism with the result that generations of indigenous children have been forced from families and communities. Their needs and well-being are not prioritized. In Christ, you were always on the move in a dangerous world, and from the first night you knew the terror of being away from your home and community. In silence, we remember and pray for children who were taken from their homes to residential schools and for their families, for children who died because of residential schools, for those who grieve the death of children, for children and their families who are caught in cycles of violence, for children and their families who do not have access to the basic services necessary to be healthy, safe, and thriving. For the Indigenous children who are, still today, being removed from their homes and communities by welfare services at disturbing and destructively high levels. For children who have felt there is no place for them in this world. Holy Spirit, stir in us dedication to the conviction that racism can be eliminated and give us the will to work for the end of iniquity and injustice that harms indigenous children. Let us work for reconciliation. Amen. 
Let us join together as we sing our intro to Hallelujah, Hallelujah, give thanks. Join me in the responsive call to worship. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the earth rejoice and be glad. Let the heavens declare your righteousness. May all people see your glory, O God. May your be known throughout the earth. Amen. Let us join together singing, He's got the whole world in His hand. before God in our gathering prayer and as always when it comes to the prayer of confession and the words turn white please join me God of promise and purpose we greet you this day with thankful hearts as flowers unfurl and buds open the beauty of your world lifts our spirits in praise as children grow and students prepare to graduate their energy and enthusiasm encourage us towards your future your world is full of such variety and detail. We stand in awe of your creative imagination. Lord, draw close to us in this hour of worship and show us the promise and the purpose in our own lives. May we move into the future renewed by the energy of your Holy Spirit. God of diversity and detail, the wonders of your creation amaze us. May we confess we often fail to honor its beauty and variety in the details of our lives. When 
When voices differ in opinion, we listen to those we agree with. We fail to honor experiences different than our own. We resist calls to honor the earth. Forgive our narrow perspectives. Open our eyes and our hearts to the pain and perspectives of others and renew us all with your healing grace. All this we ask in Jesus' name as we say the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, Jesus said, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let his forgiveness set you at peace with God and yourself and make peace with one another. Amen. Our worship song this morning is Awesome God. your word brings light to your people now just as it did long ago Lord fill us with your spirit as we listen for your word open our minds and hearts to receive light to guide us and truth to change us in the name of Christ our risen Lord we pray Amen our responsive reading today comes from Psalm 67 May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Salah. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. And our gospel reading today comes from John's Gospel, chapter 5, reading the first nine verses. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called, in Hebrew, Beth Satha, which has five porticos. And in these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want me to, sorry, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. And Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. 
This is the word of the Lord. When you go to a fast food joint and you order a burger, almost without a doubt, the person who's taking your order will ask, do you want fries with that? Of course, the answer is an emphatic yes. I mean, who wants a salad with a greasy burger when you can have hot, salty fries? Likewise, when you go out to a nice restaurant and you can't finish your meal, when the wait staff come to take away the plates and they see you still have some left, they'll likely ask if you want a box to take the rest of your meal home. And assuming you enjoy the dish, dish, your answer will more likely be, yes, please. And remember back when you were at school and you were cramming for a big test? You intended to stay up late working on practice questions and going over your notes, but then life got in the way. You had chores to do, but more distracting was that gorgeous weather outside. So after your chores were finished, you went and you played with your friends. However, the next morning as you were preparing for school and thinking about that upcoming test, your decision not to study didn't sound like such a great idea. So when you arrived at school and your teacher asks the class, would you mind if we delay the test one more day? Of course, you and your classmates replied energetically and in relief, yes. These are only a few examples of times when we're asked a question and our responses are often yes. Although I guess your answers don't have to be in the affirmative. Maybe, maybe you really want a salad with your burger to help offset the calories. Or maybe you're one of those strange people that likes tests and wants to do it even though you aren't prepared. Regardless, there are simply some questions that people ask us which we graciously accept without question. Times where we don't have to think twice. We simply say yes to the offer being made. You don't, you think that that would have been the case in our biblical text today. Jesus has been traveling through Galilee and he arrives in Jerusalem in time for a Jewish festival. Now whether he entered the walled city through the sheep gate entrance or simply found himself in that suburb of Jerusalem, we don't know. However, John tells us that Jesus ends up at the pool of Beth Zapha. Now, pools were a place for people to enter the water and cool down or to cleanse themselves. And this particular pool was rumored to have healing properties. So it was popular, especially with those suffering ailments. And John tells us that under the porticos, which are covered areas supported by columns, lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. With such a large group of suffering people, I'm sure this wasn't a pool frequented by the upper echelon of society. In fact, I'm sure it was a pool that was likely avoided. Still, here we find Jesus walking amongst the hurting and the suffering. Recognizing Jesus' affinity to show love to those from society, often who were ignored or marginalized, we can hardly be surprised to find Jesus in such a place. As he walks among the sick and the lame, Jesus comes up to a man who's been ill for 38 years. A long time, by any account. And anyone suffering from a lasting or chronic condition can appreciate what this man has been dealing with. Furthermore, when Jesus sees this man lying there under the portico, he knows he's been there for a long time. No doubt he knows everything about this individual as he asks, do you want to be made well? Now put yourself in this man's shoes. You've been lame most of your life and unable to walk, not able to work or earn a living. You're destitute, having been pushed to the margins of society and cast off. So in desperation, you've come to this pool hearing rumors of its healing powers. And day after day, you sit in hope under the shade of the portico alongside others who are suffering and are ill. It's not much of a life as you endure long days and long nights with nothing to do. And then one day a stranger comes up to you and he chooses you out of the throng of sufferers and he asks, do you want to be made well? What would your answer be? I'm pretty confident I'd answer an emphatic yes or heck yeah or please do. I mean, who wouldn't? want that. 
For sure, the cynic in me might question this man's motives or question how he intended to heal me. But in answer to his question, why wouldn't I respond with yes? Do I want to be made well? Of course. The strange thing is, in our scripture reading, the lame man doesn't respond with yes. Instead, he offers a complaint. He says, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Is it just me or is his response a little strange? Not only does he seemingly ignore or accept Jesus' invitation to be healed, but he also gives an excuse regarding his inability to get into the pool, specifically when the water is stirred up. And if you're a little confused by his answer, especially this reference to getting into the water when it's stirred up, you're probably not the only one. You may have noticed during our scripture reading that there wasn't a fourth verse. As we read, read verse 3 and then straight through to 5. This is because in some ancient texts, a fourth verse was added to try and explain what the lame man is talking about. And in short, this added verse says that an angel of the Lord would come and stir up the waters of the pool at certain seasons, and whoever stepped into the water first was healed of whatever illness or ailment they had. And this explanation is based on ancient superstitions that were ascribed to the water's healing powers. It's therefore with this understanding and belief in the healing effect of the water that the man seems to be only half listening to Jesus. He hears Jesus say, do you want to be made well? And he thinks the only way this is going to happen is if he can get into the water of the pool. But he makes sure to tell Jesus that he's tried many times, but was unable to. More frustrating still for the man was that when he did manage to get close, others beat him into the water, and therefore he missed out on the supposed healing powers. In the end, the man fails to recognize that Jesus is offering to heal him. However, despite the man's inability to realize what's being offered, Jesus responds by saying, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat, and he began to walk. And Jesus cures the man of his long-time condition simply by inviting him to stand and to walk away. With these words, Jesus gives the man a new life. Jesus transforms his world right there under the portico. No longer is the man lame. Instead, he becomes mobile and able to go on with his life, but in a new direction. No longer does he have to sit day after day at the pool waiting for the waters to stir, waiting in hope and in desperation that he'd be cured. Instead, Jesus has given him a new life, and with it, new meaning. Jesus has given him new hope, new expectations. There's a bright light on the horizon. Jesus changes his life with the simple invitation to be made well. Now, this isn't the end of the story, but if we look closely, we discover that this passage stands out. Throughout the gospel, there, Gospels, there are many stories of Jesus curing the sick, the mute, the deaf, and the lame. He casts out demons, he rids people of leprosy, he even brings some people back to life. So we'd be excused if we put our scripture reading today alongside those other miracles. However, as I said, this story is different. It's not unique in how Jesus performed the miracle. For example, in other instances, he invited people to stand and walk or rise from their slumber. Instead, what makes this story different is that Jesus approaches the man and offers healing. In other texts, those who are ill or those who are suffering, they come and they plead to Jesus. Or in other cases, a loved one approaches Jesus on their behalf. However, in this situation, Jesus comes up to the man laying in the portico and asks him if he wants to be healed. Therefore, this story shows another side of Jesus. It tells us that Jesus is active in our world as he does the work of his Father. Our Savior comes to us, 
He calls to us. He enters our lives even when we least expect it and asks if he can help. He invites us to a new life in him, a life of healing. Jesus calls to us to live a new life found through him, faith in him, and him alone. There are many promises and seemingly attractive solutions to the problems we face in our world. We're constantly bombarded with how we should live and we're given advice as to what can help us. We're told what we need to do to make us feel better, whether it's purchasing this or that, reading certain books or teachings, following certain customs or rituals or practices, living a certain lifestyle, taking medications, drugs, or traditional remedies. There are so many answers out there claiming to be the truth and the solutions to our problems. Yet many of these are only temporary solutions or they simply mask our troubles. In the end, they don't work. And worse still, they often give us false hope, like the ancient beliefs of an angel of God stirring the waters and giving healing virtues to the Bethsatha pool. The reality is that the truth, hope, and answer is found in our Lord and Savior. Jesus offers us something more than the world can possibly give. The wonderful thing is that he sees us and he approaches us. He knows what we're going through and how long we've been suffering or dealing with things. He knows everything about us, good and bad. Yet despite all this, he still comes to us asking, do you want to be well? But it's up to us how we choose to respond. Will you complain to him about all that's wrong with your life? Will you give excuses as to why you live the way you do? Or will you say yes when he asks the question? Amen. Let us pray. Savior, whatever our circumstance, you come to us offering healing. May we put aside our egos and our pride. May we stay away from the excuses and gratefully accept your generous and unparalleled offer. Lord, you are the truth and the way and the source of hope and healing. May we remember this and stand firm in our faith. Amen. This week as we respond, how do I respond to Jesus? This week's mission moment as we continue to look at uh, how our donations to Presbyterian Sharing and PWS and D make a difference. We're talking about a ministry that takes place in my old presbytery. Living Waters is a mission of the Presbytery of Lindsay Peterborough that reaches out to marginalized people in downtown Peterborough, Ontario. The Reverend Jonathan Baird regularly visits people living on the streets and invites them to the two drop-in programs that Living Waters Mission runs in partnership with the Bridge Youth Center. The programs offer meals, support, counseling, and Christian fellowship. One woman, one woman who struggles with mental health and addiction expressed her appreciation, quote, I come here because it is the only place where I feel loved, unquote. May we keep this mission in our prayers. God has created a world of great diversity, full of wonder, full of potential. Let us honor God's gifts to us in Christ and in each other as we present our offering in support of God's purposes in the world. Let us pray. Generous God, we thank you for your gift of new life in Christ Jesus. We ask that you receive our gifts this day and bless each gift and each giver. Use each one to witness to your purposes through our congregation and throughout the world that you love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's come together in singing How Great Thou Art.
Before God, in our prayer for the world, I'll say, God of mercy, and invite you to respond. Hear our cry. Let us pray. Lord our God, the earth and all its people belong to you. As we come before you in prayer, we are painfully aware that the earth itself is at risk from the ways your people live on it and the conflicts we provoke among each other. We seek your healing and hope this day for the earth and all its creatures and for your people of every nation. God of healing and hope, we pray for peace and that justice would emerge in war-torn lands and in every place of conflict where power struggles put innocent people at risk. We name before you the people and places on our hearts today who are experiencing conflicts. We think of Ukraine and Afghanistan, Ethiopia and South Sudan, Syria and Yemen. Lord, send your spirit of wisdom and compassion to break open the hearts of leaders, to work with each other to protect the innocent, and to restore order for the well being of all. May your ways of truth and justice prevail in every heart and in every land. God of mercy. 
God of healing and hope, we pray for Presbyterian World Service and Development and its partners and all groups offering aid and renewal in places where disaster and conflict have left people at risk. Support those who have lost their homes and families and livelihoods to find courage to go on and open hearts of those who live in places of safety and security to share with those in need. We think of those uh, who's lost loved ones in Ontario and in Quebec from the storms yesterday. We, Lord, we lift them all up to you. God of mercy. And God of healing and hope, we know that this land we call home faces conflict and pain and that communities are divided by deep disagreements. We pray for healing and understanding to deepen between indigenous people and those who settled this land with no thought for those who'd already called it home. Protect those who face racist attitudes and actions in daily life and restore dignity and hope to those who have suffered injustice in a system that benefits others. Open our eyes, Lord, to the creativity and courage in communities that feel unfamiliar to us and open our hearts to build new relationships with each other so we grow closer as neighbors and friends. God of mercy. And God of healing and hope, we pray for the renewal of your creation and for the protection of species that are at risk. By your spirit, teach us to change our ways when they are harmful to the earth and inspire us to find solutions to problems that seem so vast. Make us good stewards of your land. God of mercy. And God of healing and hope, we pray for those who are sick and in pain. We pray for all those who live in grief, loneliness or anxiety, and all who find those, uh, these uncertain times overwhelming. In the silence, we remember before you those for whom we know are struggling, those who are hurting, who are anxious or afraid, and those who are healing. We also lift up to you our joys and our blessings. Lord, by your Spirit, surround each one of us with strength and love and equip us to offer support to those around us. God of mercy. God of healing and hope, Jesus walks with us day by day to see us through every challenge. And so we claim this healing hope that he offers. All this we pray together, saying, God of mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Our closing hymn, I have decided to follow Jesus. <coughs> Friends, go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Go with courage and faith, knowing that you are not alone. 
For you go with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. every day, filling all our lives with love and joy and peace. May the God of justice meet us on our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Praying, let us work for peace, singing, share our joy with all, working for a world that's new, faithful, Oh